Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm actually in Jerusalem, so sorry. For that. Oh, n- no worries, no worries. Uh, great to have you on. Um, uh, I don't know if you caught it, but um, the uh, op-ed that was penned by uh, Berkeley law professor Stephen Solomon saying, yeah. "Don't hire my anti-Semitic law students." What do you think about uh, that posture? You know, I think uh, fortunately I've been blessed not to have this problem, and George Mason uh, Law School um, has reacted, uh, you know, commendably. Uh, to this unspeakable massacre. But one of the distressing things uh, about the massacre, nobody you know, imagined how quite evil, unspeakably evil, even Hamas is. But nobody thought you know, that Hamas was so great in the first place. What's the really shocking thing is not just the unspeakable brutality of Hamas's crimes, but that they have so many what I would call Holocaust deniers, Holocaust excusers, um, in prominent positions in, in, in the West, in universities and academia. And we see, uh, you know, both at law schools, doctors, we see so many educated people who are supposed to be part of the, uh, you know, liberal elite of society, uh, engaging in genocide uh, apologetics or even genocide celebration before our eyes. I'm not a big fan of cancel culture. Uh, I don't think people should be dinged for misspeaking uh, off-the-cuff statements, uh, you know, or, or youthful indiscretions. But when you come out and celebrate an event that involved the mass slaughter and torture of people with babies burned alive in front of their parents and parents burned alive in front of their babies, raping women and then killing them. If you have anything good to say about that, if you have anything morally ambiguous to say about that, that raises a serious question about your fitness for the bar. To be admitted to the bar, you need to be, you know, you need to be, uh, pass a moral fitness test. And it seems that this is uh, manifestly uh, inconsistent. The same with doctors who express sympathy with this. Right? Certain professions have higher obligations. You know, how could you trust a doctor to treat you if you're Jewish if they have celebrated the uh, the murder of your people? That's a good point. Uh, I wanted to get to, to some of the uh, geopolitical uh, uh, yes. thoughts that you had on this as well. Um, you uh, tweeted out about uh, President Biden's visit to uh, Israel to, uh, tomorrow. Uh, the... Uh, the Biden administration is holding Israel back from taking out Hamas. How so? Yes. So President Biden is coming tomorrow uh, in the middle of this war. It's a highly unusual thing to do. And the question is why? Right? There's, not, there's no conversations he can have that he can't have you know, by the phone. But you know, Israel is poised for a ground invasion of Gaza, an invasion that is sure to cause a lot of damage, to result in a lot of casualties. Uh, and you know, also at the same time, you know, fundamentally end the paradigms of the Middle East, the two-state solution model that Biden has devoted his life to. By Biden coming, the, the thing he primarily accomplishes is makes it impossible for Israel to launch a ground invasion until at least sometime after he leaves. So uh, that's that's a problem, and it's clear that uh, the Biden administration is pushing Israel to uh, adopt, you know, to accept something other than complete and permanent victory uh, over the people who did this. Well, is there any way his presence might help get the American hostages back? I know there's 199 in total, and we did hear from one young lady who was at that music festival, and she said that she was receiving medical treatment, and I don't, I'm sure you saw that videotape that was released yesterday, right? Yeah, the videotape itself was... Uh, uh, form of abuse and a form of psychological torture. Uh, her mother, upon seeing this video, said she could tell that she was being forced to say this, that she was being coerced. And this is like the hostage videos American POWs were made to uh, right. put out by the, by the Vietnamese. It's an abuse of prisoners. Um, we don't know, you know, this, is, this video could have been days old. We don't know if she's still alive. And Hamas is engaging in psychological manipulation. The goal cannot be simply the release of American hostages. Right? The, the goal must be the, that this could never happen again. 
And the only way for that to happen is that Hamas starts to be completely wiped out. Hamas took these hostages for a reason, right? To use them as a tool to buy them time and to use them as basically human shield. That cannot be allowed to happen. Um, something else that needs to be confronted is of uh, the uh, moral equivocations in the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, literati here. Um, let me give you an example. I want to get your reaction to Nick Kristoff writing at uh, New York Times, of course. Um, th- one reason the sympathy for Hamas in some leftist quarters is so wrongheaded: Hamas militants are not freedom fighters; they're misogynist oppressors of their own people who commit atrocities against Israelis that lead to counterstrikes that kill civilians. Instead of helping Palestinians advance, Hamas enormously magnifies their suffering. So that's one sentence, one paragraph. The next paragraph. Yet this too must be said. Another reason for the hatred is the endless degradation in Gaza that results from Israel's periodic bombings and from its economic blockade. And the uh, upshot is Dick Kristoff sort of wondering aloud, what good does it do to destroy Gaza? How do you react? Right. So, first of all, Israel has not controlled Gaza since 2005. Israel left Gaza completely in 2005. They took out all the civilians. They took out. They even took out the bodies from the court, uh, from the cemeteries. And then Hamas won the elections and took power and began attacking Israel. The blockade that Israel has maintained of Gaza, which is obviously a very partial blockade, look at all the weaponry they got, look at all the tunnels they got, uh, was in response to Hamas's attack in the first place. So Nick Kristoff is falling for Hamas's central weapon, which is to attack Israel, to provoke a response, which they then use as justification for, uh, for, uh, for further attacks. But I want to say, even if the Gazan people, even if the Gazan people are suffering, there's a lot of suffering people in the world. The Gazans are not high on the list of suffering peoples. Uh, do we see other suffering peoples um, cut open pregnant women's stomachs, stab their babies to death, and then shoot them, to tie families together and use them as kindling for each other. We don't see this in any context of any people that right, well, wait, how do you, time around the world. There's five to 600 Americans who are trapped in Gaza who are at the Egyptian border trying to get out. Do you think they should have a right to leave? I think, I think all the people in Gaza who want to leave should leave. I think that's that's crucial. Right? Israel wants to minimize civilian casualties, and uh, Hamas is bottling up people who want to flee the conflict inside uh, inside Gaza. And the U.S., which gives Egypt three billion dollars a year in aid, must insist that Egypt solve this humanitarian crisis by opening its border to, to refugees. And you know, there's a big irony here: the people who love refugees the most. To say America should open its borders to refugees, European countries should border, open their borders to refugees, won't pressure and won't demand that Egypt open their border to a small number of refugees from a neighboring area that they used to occupy. Eugene Konarovich is the head of the Inter- Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Eugene Konarovich is the head of the International Law Department at the Colat Policy Forum, a Jerusalem think tank. He's also a professor at George Mason University's Scalia Law School. Professor Konarovich, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's what Chicago is talking about. It's Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy on AM 560. The answer. Looking to give your home a one of a kind makeover? It's time to think outside the box with Forever Remodeling. We're highly skilled to design and build kitchens, bathrooms.